When I was in university, I was a serial procrastinator. I was also the type of person who would do the bare minimum to do well in exams. But if you today asked me how to do linear regression in Stata, which is something that we studied in our economics degree, I would have absolutely no idea. I am someone who always wants to be really good at what I do, but during my degree, for some reason, I could just never push myself to really go the extra mile and go to the next level to really be good at economics. So when I started learning to code, I was facing a lot of the same problems as when I was studying economics. I was learning the stuff, but I wasn't actually learning or acquiring, as I like to call, properly learning something. So for a long time, I was very concerned that I could never learn how to code well enough to actually get a job as a developer. But then something changed. I came to this realization about my strategy of how I was actually going about learning to go that would end up drastically changing my approach and finally allow me to start acquiring what I was learning rather than just shallowly learning it and then forgetting it two weeks later. But to understand the significance of that, we first need to understand something else. And that's how our brains actually work. So our brains are made up of neurons. In fact, 85 billion neurons. A neuron is essentially just a cell which acts as a messenger, sending information in the form of nerve impulses, like just basically electrical signals. So when you learn things, what physically actually happens in your brain is that you're creating these connections between the neurons in your brains. And in a way, the smarter you are, the more of these connections you have, and the more deeply you know something, the stronger the connections are in that particular area of knowledge. So essentially the first time when you learn something, let's say you learn how to do a for loop in JavaScript, you're creating this weak connection between some neurons. The problem is initially this connection is very weak. So let's say you just read in some documentation or some course or textbook that here's how you do a for loop in JavaScript. You create that connection in your brain, but because you haven't properly used that information yet, your brain isn't really convinced yet that this information is important enough to warrant a really strong connection between the neurons of that part of your brain. So how do you make these connections stronger? Neuroscience has shown that the way our brains strengthen these connections is through repeated practice of that information. So by simply reading something once isn't enough. You need to put that information into practice because the way our brains developed is to prioritize information that's important. In evolutionary times, the information that was important to our survival was something that our brains would then prioritize and make those connections really strong so that we could do that stuff like hunting an animal, for example, automatically rather than not knowing how to do it when the time comes. So that's why in order to convince your brain that some information is important, you need to be repeatedly using that information and actually extracting that information out of your brain. So then your brain starts to believe, okay, this must be important because they're using this stuff so much. So we might as well make the connection stronger because otherwise the bearer might die or something. Okay, you probably won't die if you can't do a for loop in JavaScript, but you'll definitely die if you forget to comment your code and you're working with an angry senior, so make sure you do that. But anyway, by applying information into practical real-world problems, the stronger you make the connections in your brain, and in other words, the more you know how to actually use that information. As an example, to sort of practice what I preach here, yesterday I was building this app called the Financial Freedom Calculator. It was a great way for me to learn to use this library called Graph.js. So instead of just reading about how to use Graph.js from the documentation or from some tutorial, I actually went ahead and without even knowing how to use it, I started building a project that I actually want to build where I was using that framework. Now that I've actually built a thing using this, using this framework is a lot more ingrained to my brain and I can actually use it rather than basically not knowing how to use it at all, like with many other things that I learned in economics, which if you asked me to do them, I wouldn't be able to do them at all. So then how do you force yourself to make something really good? Well, one really great way to do that is by creating accountability through actually putting your projects online. If only there was a really cheap way for me to do that, that also gives me a domain to actually put my projects online. Oh wait, there is. And that's today's video sponsor, Hosting. Hosting is one of the leading hosting providers online. What that means is that you can take your project and actually place it online for people to see on the internet. And the cheapest plans start as as low as $1.99 a month. So let's say you wanna build a simple portfolio website for yourself, which as a developer, you should definitely have. When I was doing this for myself, I could not believe how easy it was. When you sign up, you'll reach this landing page and all you have to do is click on setup and then you'll just be answering a couple of questions. I'm gonna be building this website for myself. It will be a portfolio website. I'd say I am a beginner with some experience. And the easiest way to get a website set up in just minutes is by using WordPress, which is what I did for my personal website. Then you just create an account, choose a theme and boom, I was able to have a website live in literally 
minutes. And because of how easy it is to build a website using WordPress with Hostinger, I was able to have this website ready in less than one day. And that's really what I like about Hostinger. You have everything that you'd ever need to build a website and it's so easy to get it set up extremely fast. And in addition to all of this, if you choose Hostinger's premium plan, they will also give you a free domain. That's the actual web address that people will type into their browsers to get to your website. Head out to hostinger.com slash internet encoder and use the code internet encoder to get up to 91%. Oh, thanks for hosting over sponsoring this video. So why did I suck at economics? Why was I never able to learn economics in the same way as I was able to learn coding, for example? Well, from the previous understanding of how our brains actually work, it's pretty obvious why that is. It's because I was never applying the things that I was learning in economics, in actual problems. Sure, I was memorizing stuff to pass the exam and I did pretty well in my exams at the end of the day, but memorization is not understanding. When you memorize something, you just place it in your short-term memory rather than creating those strong connections in your brains. And by the way, I'm not a neuroscientist or anything, so I'm not sure if all of this is like scientifically correct, but it's just how I think about it. So this really leads to another question. Why was I not able to apply my economics knowledge? I could have created a project where I take some data and like create some model. Why was I not able to force myself to do that? There's a lot of skills and things that I've tried to learn in my life, like graphic design, which I've sort of tried learning, but I've never really mastered. And the fundamental problem with all of these things for me is that I wasn't excited about the types of problems that these skills would have allowed me to solve. Whereas with coding, there are clear practical solutions that I'm, I can make with it that I actually want to make, that I'm actually excited to create. Like this app, for example, tracking my investments and like sort of planning my financial future is something I'm really interested in. And just being able to create an app like this where I can visualize it nicely and then share it in the world is something I'm actually excited about and something I actually want to create. So that then pushes me to want to properly learn the things to make it. And for a lot of people, the situation might be the opposite. You might be very excited to think about the growth rates of populations of countries or something like that, or use econometrics to model our consumption behavior or something like that. And that's amazing because those people can just focus on economics and I can focus on coding. People are different. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so what about if you need to learn something, but you can't figure out an exciting project to apply it on, but you know that that knowledge is still going to be something that you need to learn long term? What do you do then? When I'm struggling, I always try to find some practical end goal, whether it's understanding computers a bit better or knowing that the framework I'm learning will eventually allow me to build something that I'm actually excited about and then keep that end goal in mind throughout my process that will actually then motivate me and allow me to keep going even if I don't feel like doing something I will just sort of force myself to do problems and find the interesting parts about them but at the end of the day whenever you're learning coding or whatever if you always feel like you don't really want to learn it and that's it's just not interesting to you maybe you should think about is this something that you want to learn at all maybe coding could be for you the thing that economics was for me where I at the end of the day wasn't excited enough about the applications and the solutions that I would allow to solve. Coding like any other skill is just a tool to solve problems. And if you're not excited about the problems, maybe there's some other skills and some other set of problems that you'd be more excited about. That's completely fine. I've tried a lot of things in my life that I didn't end up sticking with because it wasn't the thing that I wanted to do the most. One of the most important things is finding that thing, that set of problems that you're most excited to work on and then just do that for the rest of your life basically. And figuring that out is really, really hard. It can take a really, really long time. The only way to know is to try. With my economics degree, I tried and I failed. I figured out that that wasn't the thing that I was most excited about. And that's actually amazing because now I know. Now I know that economics is not my thing and I can instead focus my time on other things like coding, which right now I'm pretty sure that this is the thing that I want to do in the long term, but maybe I'll end up changing my mind in the future. Let's see what happens. But besides practice, it's definitely true that sometimes you just don't feel like doing something. Even though you want the end result, at times when you just feel demotivated, you just don't feel like getting anything done. So if you want to know the techniques that I am using to work smart rather than hard, which allows me to learn really effectively, I highly suggest that you watch this video next where I talk about my top five techniques to work smart rather than hard when I'm learning to code. Watch that video next.